Hello, this is Air, and welcome to the 27th episode of Death Row Executions. Today's story is on Harry Charles Moore, who was sent to death row for killing his half-sister and her husband. The two were also his mother and father-in-law. Harry was born on May 5, 1941, and there is not much on his early life, but he was a troubled person who always caused issues within his family. He was very violent, and his mother once put in a request for a restraining order against him, citing mental and physical abuse. He was abusive to animals and mostly tortured cats and dogs. He was married three times and abusive to all of his wives. His first marriage failed, and the next time he married, it was with his own niece, and he had forced her at gunpoint to marry him. That marriage ended in a divorce, and Harry moved on to his third and final wife. Harry's half-sister, 53-year-old Barbara Cunningham, and her husband, 60-year-old Thomas Laurie, had a daughter by the name of Cynthia, also known as Cindy. Harry's mother was a former minister, and when Harry requested to marry Cynthia, his mother is the one who performed the illegal wedding ceremony. Harry was 51 years old, Cynthia was 27, the two were uncle and niece, and now also husband and wife. The two eventually had a baby girl together by the name of Jennifer Moore, but the relationship was far from perfect. Cynthia tried to leave Harry and even filed for sole custody of her six-month-old daughter, Jennifer. She also let Harry know that her plans were to move to Las Vegas, Nevada. Harry believed that Barbara and Thomas were behind Cynthia wanting to move, and he claimed that he was scared and, in his own words, said that it would force them into a life of drugs and prostitution. He felt that they were interfering too much and wanted it to come to an end. In June 1992, Harry kidnapped Cynthia and his daughter Jennifer. He then went searching for his father-in-law Thomas, who was at the post office in Salem, Oregon. Once found, Harry shot him four times in the face, killing him. After killing Thomas, he went to his sister-slash-mother-in-law's house and shot her one time in the stomach and then three times in the head. He left Cynthia and Jennifer unharmed and turned himself in. He confessed to everything and was eventually convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to death by method of lethal injection on July 20, 1993. The judge presiding over his trial, Judge Barber, agreed with the psychologist who evaluated Harry and concluded that he was sane and would grant his wish in wanting to die. Harry expressed that he wanted to die as soon as possible and said, I want to get a date, get executed, and get out of here. This is a very boring place. He showed no remorse and continued to express that he killed two predators that would expose his daughter to evil. He threatened to sue anyone who tried to stop his execution and even wrote a letter to the Oregon Supreme Court in an appeal to drop the automatic appeal of his sentence. Harry's execution was set for May 16, 1997, and weeks before, on May 9, 1997, he penned his final letter to press. On execution day, May 16, 1997, while drugs were being administered to his body, he whispered, I wanted the last words I say to be Jennifer. J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R. And now for discussion and question time. I find it so interesting how narcissistic people can hurt other people and get so upset when they believe someone is doing them wrong or cannot see what they do is 10 times worse. He married his relative and forced his ex-wife to marry him at gunpoint, and he was also very abusive. He made a statement that he was scared that his in-laws were going to expose his daughter to evil, but shouldn't he be worried about his daughter being exposed to his evil? I think narcissism is a very, very scary thing. Also, his mom filed a restraining order out on him, but still performed an illegal wedding ceremony. I wonder if Harry just stalked his family and they were unable to get away from him. If you raised a son you ended up fearing, would you try to have them arrested or go along with their irrational requests? I guess we wouldn't know if we were never in that type of situation, and I'm also assuming that her telling him no wouldn't have sufficed. So do you think if you had a son like that you would try and stay as far away as possible, or would you try to help him no matter what and always stick around? I read in an article that Harry initially requested for his execution to be on his 56th birthday, and he also wanted a female executioner as well as full media access. 
His attorney, Michael Mills, said that Harry felt it would be a deterrent in the state of Oregon, and I honestly don't think that that was his intention at all in requesting a female executioner and media access. What are your thoughts on that? And lastly, I wonder if he had an obsessive personality. I find it odd that he only mentioned his daughter and not his other children. Have any of you ever experienced having parents who played favoritism? Thank you guys for watching and now I'm going to share some comments from my previous video.